Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. For more than a decade, more than a decade and a half, in fact, we've had the Intel Core i3, the Intel Core i5, the i7, and so on. And now Intel are mixing things up. They're coming up with a new naming scheme, a new branding for their upcoming processors. Now, they're saying it's to make things more simplified, to make things more clear. But is that really what's happening? Well, if you want to find out more, please... Let me explain. Okay, for 15 years we've had the Intel Core, i3, i5, i7 and so on, but now Intel is rebranding its processors starting with the upcoming Meteor Lake processor. So the question is why? Why now? Why change the branding? Well, these are Intel's words about why they're doing this. Meteor Lake is an inflection point for design, manufacturing and architecture and delivers significant advances for our company and customers. Better aligns to customers request to simplify the Intel brand portfolio and a two tier brand clarifies our product strategy, differentiating our leadership and mainstream offerings. Now obviously that's a lot of fluff uh, and we're going to dive into that to see whether any of that fluff has any substance to it. So Meteor Lake, of course, is Intel's upcoming uh, processors. It will be the first client processor manufactured on the new Intel 4 process. No, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. It's the first client chiplet design enabled by the Foveros Advanced 3D Packaging that allows them to take chiplets and the little dies that come uh, when they make them and stack them and build, connect them, interconnect them in a certain way. And that's a new thing that they're doing now. And it's also the first Intel client processor to feature a dedicated AI engine called Intel AI Boost, something of course we're familiar with uh, on smartphones and of course on uh, Windows on ARM laptops, but now Intel are getting into the game. So I said we'd mention the Intel 4. So of course a lot of Intel's problems over the last few years has been because Intel is really two companies. It is a CPU design company and a chip design company, even a graphics design company. And it's also a manufacturing company. And a lot of other chip uh, companies, let's say like uh, Apple or Qualcomm, for example, even AMD don't have a manufacturing arm. They, uh, they kind of have a contract with a manufacturer, normally TSMC, Samsung have their own manufacturing plant uh, for them to manufacture the chips. So they design the chips in-house, they do all the transistors and all the design, all that stuff you need to do, and then they send it off to be manufactured uh, at, uh, at this third-party site. Now, Intel always had their own manufacturing, and they were this kind of split company, and the manufacturing side faltered, uh, and they had problems around the 10 nanometer process and and so they kind of got stuck while TSMC and therefore AMD and other companies kind of raged ahead. So Intel have finally got over that bump. It took them a long time uh, and as you can see here Intel 4, okay that was previously their 7 nanometer so as I've explained in other videos, I won't go into it now, the nanometer thing uh, doesn't really mean what we think it means. In fact, Intel aren't quoting this as Intel 4 nanometer. They're just giving it a name, Intel 4. But this one has the full uh, EUV lithography, and I cover all this in other videos if, you are, if you're interested in all of that. And that's what the Meteor Lake system is going to be built on. These are the ones that Intel are using at the moment. This is what's coming. And then we've got more things coming down the line. After three, they've got 20A, and then they've got 18A, and so on. These are in the future. So this is what we're looking at. This, they're previously their seven nanometer uh, process. So what on earth is going on? So better aligns to customer requests to simplify the Intel brand portfolio. So what are Intel doing to address that? Well, Intel will drop the I from the processor tiering on the client processors, beginning with Meteor Lake, and all new products thereafter. So you no longer have the core i3, i5, i7, i9, you now have the core 3, 5, 7, and 9. So congratulations, Intel. You dropped the i, and that really did simplify the Intel brand portfolio. Well, uh, their argument is, of course, that there are other products, iPhone, for example, that have the i in front of it. I, of course, has been a, a big feature of uh, Intel's chips for many years. 
even way back, like, you know, the 486, for example, that technically was called the i486, uh, the Intel 486. Of course, it was also the 80486. So i has been with us for Intel, and of course, Intel begins with an i, for a long time, but they feel that iPhone, iMac, uh, they kind of is stolen the, the the meaning of that word I so they're dropping it and that's going to simplify everything for us apparently and then just to make things even more simpler there's now the core ultra not just the core but core ultra so Intel is introducing the new core ultra processor brand for the most advanced client processors with bigger feature sets so they will include arc level graphics integrated into the processor that you won't see in any products in the mainstream core not core ultra core space and what i think that means is we're going to still get the the intel graphics in the core products and we're going to get the arc graphics integrated ones in the core ultra products we'll have to see how that pans out that's how i'm reading that uh ai capabilities now does that mean that the core ones without core ultra don't have ai in it that's another thing we have to find out and of course ultra so it's going to have to have the best performance that's definitely going to be a thing so this is the new lineup we've got the core three we've got the core five and we've got the core seven okay that's just the same as what we had without the eye in front of it there's no core nine and then we come up to the core ultra five and the core ultra seven and then the core ultra nine so the nine is the top it can only be in the ultra and there's no three so there's no core ultra three so this the top line is kind of shifted starting at five ending at nine the bottom line starts at three and it ends at seven now <laughs> uh you know core i3 i5 but no core nine core ultra five but no core three as i've just said so this tier three uh two tiered brand clarifies apparently the product strategy differentiating Intel's leadership uh, and mainstream offerings. So there we go. Um, it'll be interesting. Do you think that clarifies things? Uh, I don't think it does. I don't think that clarifies things at all. So there are lots of questions that spring from this. For example, is the Core Ultra 5, so that's the first Core Ultra, is that better than a Core 7, the normal Core 7? Okay, maybe the Core Ultra 5 has Arc Graphics, the Core 7 wouldn't have, let's say, but then maybe if you put a dedicated graphics card in your in your PC, which a lot of people do, uh, then is the Core 7 going to be faster than the Core Ultra 5? We just don't know. We really have to see uh, what are the CPU core configurations for the different models. So we've, we've got 3, 5, 7 and 9, some are Core, some are Ultra. Uh, what, what does that mean? Is it going to be the same kind of thing as we've had in the previous generation, the same performance and efficiency cores? And what about this rumoured of the LP efficiency cores, the low power efficiency cores? Do they only come in the ultra models? Do they come only in the core? So many questions that we now are going to have to see what happens when the Meteor Lake uh, processors are officially launched. Another thing that they've also done to clarify the naming is there's no more generation number in front of the name. So at the moment, Intel brands its processors with a generation number in the name. So it'd be the 13th generation uh, Intel Core processors, the 12th gen Intel Core processors, the 11th gen Intel Core processor, and so on. And you'll see that stamped on the box. You'll see that in the marketing. You'll see that in the naming. It tells you what generation of processor it is just about everywhere that you can see. Now, that's not happening anymore. Now the generation is still still only part of the model number and now the word processor appears before the model number so you get the Intel Core Ultra 7 processor and then the number whatever that happens to be and Intel are still defining this they haven't come up with the numbering scheme yet they've given some examples uh, they gave these examples to the Verge for example Intel Core Ultra 9 processor 1090H now is that 10 or one and then three digits here don't think so here it seems to be showing two digits for the generation and two for the processor so why 10 why not 14 are they just starting at 10 because that's when we switched over to the new naming uh, and we just start at one basically is the next one going to be two or is it going to be uh one one or one two, 11 or 12 anyway we'll find out again 1070k 1050U, this, these are the numbers that Intel have given out as examples, but this is not yet 
actually defined. And we do note that the HK and U thing still remains. So I've got a whole, the whole video on this channel about Intel's naming scheme with the HK and U stuff. So you should go and watch that if you don't understand those. So now we're going to have, you know, could you have an Intel Core Ultra 7 something something K and then an Intel Core 7 something something K? Uh, and, you know, <laughs> and this is all to simplify and to clarify, by the way, folks, this is what's happening. OK, so what do you think? Does this simplify and clarify the naming? Uh, let me know in the comments below.